Thomas Burnett Swan was an American poet, critic, and fantasy author. Swan died of cancer, and several of his novels were published posthumously. He died May 5th, 1976, at the age of 47. That same month, May 1976, saw Lady of the Bees come out. And July of 1976, The Tournament of Thorns was published. Perhaps this answers the question why we have two Thomas Burnett Swan novels published back-to-back -back by the A Science Fiction Specials Series 2. Welcome to Vintage SF. I'm Richard Rempel. Today we're going to talk about both of these novels. They are historical, classical mythology, fantasy novels. Thomas Burnett Swan might be one of those authors that you've never heard of, but he is well known among those who love mythology and fantasy, especially authors. In this way, he reminds me a bit of the reputation of R.A. Lafferty. In the first novel, Lady of the Bees, we'll be taking a look at Roman history and mythology. And in the second one, we'll be 1000 AD in England. The primary mythological character is actually the Lady of the Bees herself. She is a dryad. That is a spirit living in a tree, or the spirit of the tree. In the Tournament of Thorns, the mythological creatures are primarily mandrakes, living vegetable beings. Are they villains or misunderstood? Before we get to these novels, let's look at the one only interview that I could find on the internet from Thomas Burnett Swan. I found this interview on Stephen Saylor, an author's website. It comes from a fanzine from Kentucky, the Tyrian Chronicles, number four from June 13th, 1974. The photo of these pages comes from Jim, no, Kim Kirk. I want to take a look at page two of the interview. The Tyrian Chronicles asks, Of the books which you have written, which are your favorites? Swan answers, My favorite book of my own is The Lady of the Bees, developed out of the abortive novelette Where is the Bird of Fire? The title is Aces, by the way. I wanted to call the book Green o' the Woods. It's about a dryad, a spirit of the tree, but the name Melonia is a name of a Roman goddess that deals with bees and honey. It's due to be published a year from this January since Ace is returning very slowly to original novels. In actuality, it was published in May of 1976. My second favorite of my books is The Tournament of Thorns, developed out of The Manor of Roses, also due from Ace. A year from right now, he was saying in June of 1975, but we know that it's July of 1976. Both of these novels came out posthumously. So Swan's favorite novels were published close to his death. And I can see in these novels a writer who has really found his voice, who's come into his own. It's really a shame that his career ended at 47 years of age. Lady of the Bees is a retelling of the story of Romulus and Remus, but it uses these mythological characters. A dryad, a woman, the spirit of a tree. She is supposed to be four foot tall, ancient, but very beautiful. She is also green, or definitely has greenish hair. I think you can see by the cover over here that it doesn't match what a dryad is. The name change is definitely a decision by Ace, and I would assume the cover is as well. They felt that this would sell more books. Back to the story. Another mythological creature in here is a fawn. Remus rescues this fawn. Now the book itself has alternating viewpoints. There are the viewpoints of Melonia, the dryad, and Sylvan, the fawn. They tell the story. If you know the mythology around Romulus and Remus, you know that they started Rome. They are twins whose mother is dead and they are abandoned. A she-wolf raises them. Well, in this book, we do have the she-wolf. But the she-wolf and the dryad, Melonia, are friends. And so Melonia has a hand in raising them as well. Eventually, Romulus and Remus are given to a childless couple. Remus and Sylvan are best of friends and eventually they connect with Melonia. Romulus is driven with revenge. 
He seeks out battles with tyrants and wants to establish themselves on the hills of what will eventually be Rome. This tyrant may be their actual father who had ordered their death. This is a novel of nostalgia for mythology, for creatures that are dying out in the days of man. There's friendship and love, danger and battles, emotions wrote large on the hills of Rome. Swan's beautiful prose and love of mythology drive this novel. For those who love mythology, I can see how Swan could be an author you would love. Now, I must say that I don't have a lot of experience with mythology and historical novels, and I'm only starting to really appreciate fantasy. I understand that science fiction and fantasy really weren't separate categories until the late 70s, early 80s. So that is why we have these historical, mythological fantasies in the A Science Fiction Special Series 2. And I think Swan is a really good addition to their stable of authors. I have a difficult time rating this novel. I think really, if you're a fan of this type of fiction, this is a very highly rated novel for you. As for myself, this is a bit of a departure from what I normally read. At times, I found the wordy classical prose to be a bit much. So I give it 7 out of 10. Next, let's take a look at The Tournament of Thorns. The title of the book comes from a quote on page 20. Your life should be more than a tournament of thorns. You ought to find roses, too. This novel is a fix-up novel of three stories. One of them is quite famous, The Manor of Roses. It is the last story in the book, and it is the best story in the book. Once again, we have Swan's beautiful writing style, and we have a story set in the early thousands outside of London in the forests and small villages. There is a threat to these villages, mandrakes, vegetable tree-like people who look like humans. The infant and toddler girls look particularly like humans, and sometimes they've been left as orphans on the doorsteps of humans. Have they infiltrated the humans within some of these small villages? How can you detect them? Are they a threat? And do they deserve to die? We have three stories of friendship between two boys and a girl. Each one is a snapshot of the life in these communities. Progressively, we learn more and more about mandrakes. Once again, we have friendship and love, sacrifice and sorrow, terror, and even torture. I enjoyed the characters of this one a little bit better than the ones from Lady of the Bees. I give the Tournament of Thorns 8 out of 10. I'm really taken by that imagery of life as a Tournament of Thorns, but you have to be careful not to dwell completely on that danger, that pain, and look for the roses. So I'm curious, have you read Thomas Burnett Swan? Is historical, mythological fantasy something that you really enjoy? Can you tell me a little bit more about Swan's reputation in this area? Let me know in the comments below. Until next time, look for the roses.